Hello and welcome to another update. In this one will be a special one as I'll be doing a recap over the Vulida uh, offensive and I'll be checking out what happened during the different days. This is the current front line and as you can see the Russian forces have failed to capture the city. So let's see how it developed and what's happened. So looking at day one, we see that the Russian forces were in, in Pavlivka as well as Mikilska, but they only had the outskirts of the cities. They haven't crossed the river line properly and they didn't have this vacation area by the river line. So after the first day where the Russian forces started their initiative, initial offensive, they attacked this residential area to the north of Pavlivka and westwards from this area here and they then expanded eastwards from Pavlivka after capturing this area here. So that is what happened on the first day. Moving on to the second day, where the Russian forces captured these areas to the north of the river line. The Ukrainian forces reacted to it by sending further reinforcements to Volodar to be able to hold the city against the Russian advances. And if you all notice something, this is all flatlands and the Russian forces were armored columns of the Marines of the Russian armed forces as combined with DPR and LPR forces. So they were attacking from two directions, from the Pavlivka area, this was the LPR and DPR forces, and from the Mikilska area, this was the Russian forces, the Russian Marine forces. These were all professionally trained and had armored vehicles as well as other modern equipment which means that this was the brunt of their forces. As for the third day, this is where the Russians saw the most success as they captured this eastern part of Vuledar, the Dhaka area, and they advanced in the southern area towards the city itself and were trying to attack from two directions. However, due to heavy Ukrainian artillery strikes on the Russian positions, as well as moving on their reinforcements to the front line, for fighting against the Russians in this in this residential area to the east of Vuladar, they managed to push back the Russians after their offensive and actually managed to force them to retreat from this area. This gave the Russians the idea to attack from the east instead and attack the coal mine, thinking that the Ukrainians have added a lot of reinforcements to Vuladar itself, so if they attack from the flank, they'll be able to cut them off and take the city. That which gives us to day four where they then attacked from this area instead, which after which the Ukrainians completely pushed the Russians out of the Eastern Dakar area. And then the Russians continued to combine their forces to the East, but the Ukrainians also combined their forces to this Northern area, but they also received further reinforcements from the North, which allowed them to outnumber the Russian forces and attack them in the open field, catching them in a vulnerable position and destroying a lot of their equipment. So giving a short recap and overview over the front line during these days, starting out on the first day, we see the Russian forces didn't have a proper beachhead across the river line and the Ukrainian forces had full control over the Vulida area. On the second day, the Russians advanced and captured the northern parts of the river line. On the third day, they combined their forces in the center and pushed towards Dhaka area in Vulidar, trying to cut off the supply line. On the fourth day, the Ukrainian forces managed to push them back, so the Russian forces decided to flank on the eastern side towards the coal mine, but the Ukrainian forces managed to hold them here as well. After a further influx of reinforcements, they managed to hold the line and stabilize it, forcing the Russian forces to pull back, and then we see the front line today, where the Russian forces have gained insignificant advances since then, and now the Ukrainian positions are still holding the areas to the south and east of Vuledar. We can see here in this video or pictures taken from a video from the deep state mapping where we see a lot of Russian vehicles destroyed or abandoned by the Ukraine by the Russian forces. After Ukrainian artillery strikes and anti-tank uh, guns attacking the Ukrainian attacking the Russian forces when they advanced. We can see here that they are all lined up for a close quarter combat of tanks against the Ukrainian positions in the residential areas. They are using each other as for cover, which is a strategic maneuver where the furthest to the front tanks are the most damaged ones or the most armored ones, while the ones behind have more firepower and are less guarded. 
This gives them the opportunity to use each other as cover and gain the max benefits from this. Prior to the fighting, we saw some videos like this one where the Ukrainian forces, like this one where the Russian DPR forces were attacking from the southwestern area, and these videos here. Where the Ukrainian, where the Russian forces were advancing. Also, this is the DPR and LPR forces, and then we have the VDV forces, the, and here we have the Russian Marines attacking from the southwest, from the southeast into the Dakar area, as well as the eastern flank. So we have multiple videos showing how, what type of equipment and what type of soldiers went to the front line, and this was a failed offensive by the Russian forces as they attempted to capture Volodava attacking it straight on, but failed at that. Then they tried a flanking maneuver to the east and they failed at that as well. So they also has a poorly planned and poorly executed uh, offensive where the Russian forces used armored columns in the open fields to flank a heavily fortified Ukrainian position and ended up being destroyed by the artillery and anti-tank guns maneuvered around built around these uh, areas that they are heavily fortified and the Russian DPR and LPR forces attacking from the southwest, barely achieving any success. Looking at the map as it is today, we see that the Russian forces actually did manage to get some success as they captured this southern, southern vacational area to the south of to the north of the river line, and they also captured the north of Pavlivka. So they have a beachhead across the river line here in the southwest. However, they never managed to hold on to the Dakar area and they are still not in control over the eastern area. So they are in a stalemate here to the east of Vulidar and the Ukrainian forces managed to hold them back and keep hold of Vulidar. However, Vulidar is now on the front line of the war and if the Russians managed to build up a new force to attack Vulidar from further directions, there were some reports of a western area of an idea of a western flank in the direction of Poho Yevlimka. However, this is all through open fields, so the Russian forces need to make a major artillery campaign before they are able to conduct such operations, as the Ukrainians will just continue holding out their positions in these fortified areas and give the Russians a hard time. Something to note about these pictures is also that the uh, that we can only see damaged vehicles, there's none that are like completely destroyed. Most of these are just abandoned as the Ukrainian forces had proper defensives put up, which forced the Russians to fall back. And because of the tracks being destroyed, which was that which shows that the Ukrainians were focusing on the tracks rather than the tanks themselves, because the tanks were much more difficult to destroy. If they de destroyed the tracks, then the Russian forces would, would be wouldn't be able to push further and were stopped in their tracks literally. And then they had to fall back on foot. There's no, we, if we look closely, there's not a lot of bodies on the ground. There's no dead people. There's just a lot of vehicles. So there's, and this is all drone footage. So it's not like the Ukrainians moved in, took the bodies away and then uh, just cleared everything. So there's not a lot of personnel casualties. There's just a lot of vehicle casualties in this offensive. That's all for my update and analysis of the Uledar offensive by the Russian forces. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed and have a great day.